Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be trying to repair this 1950s RCA 7HF3 that my dad found on the side of the road. It's basically just a big multi-input speaker cab thing. So you got the control panel over here with the input selector. And I did try plugging this in and playing some music through my phone, as is, but it was making some concerning popping noises and then a small amount of smoke started coming out from somewhere. So I quickly shut everything down, but... It does appear to be all original just from looking at it, so hopefully it won't be too bad of a repair. So let's see if I can fix it. This is what it looked like from behind before I got started with the turntable, the radio receiver, the amp with no tubes because I had already taken the tubes out at this point. And here's the tube chart on the left. It's just got a 5Y3 rectifier, two 6B6s for the power tubes, and two 6CG7s. And then for the speaker setup, you got these two tweeters on the top and then this big driver on the bottom. For this video, I'm just going to be focusing on repairing the amplifier portion of this thing. And this is the amp once I got it out of the chassis, again, with all the tubes removed. But you basically just got the power transformer, output transformer, and these two big filter cans on top. And then taking a look inside, everything looks to be all original unless there was some kind of repair done a long time ago but like I said earlier it did work even though there were some weird noises so it shouldn't be too bad to figure out what's going on. My repair plan was basically to replace all the coupling and all the filter caps because that's what I knew needed to be replaced and then I'd try it out and see if that fixed everything and in addition to that I also knew I needed to add a grounded power cord because the stock one was obviously two prong and I also knew I needed to add a fuse because the circuit did not come with a fuse. So once all those coupling caps came in the mail, I got to work taking out the old ones and putting in all the new ones. So this is what it looked like when I was about halfway done with replacing the coupling caps. You can see those three black ones are new, as well as those two orange drops. And at this point I took a break from soldering to put in the new grounded power cable, and I also drilled a hole for the fuse holder. And it's also worth mentioning that this circuit does not have a death cap, surprisingly. You can see on the schematic here that it's just not there. But anyway, I got everything wired up with the primary, or the, uh, the hot wire going to the fuse and then to the power switch over here. And then you can see the white neutral wire over there. And the green grounding wire is secured to the chassis. So then I got back to soldering, just had to put a few more of those orange drops in, and then pretty soon all the coupling caps were done. And in this clip, I think there are still a couple joints that needed to be soldered, but this is what it looked like, and I did get to those. Um, there was kind of a big blob of orange drops in the middle because of the lead length, but I went pretty well over the voltage rating on those, so I wasn't too worried about them getting hot. And at this point, it was time to do some testing because it did work when I first plugged it in with no repairs, so I just wanted to make sure it still worked with the new coupling caps. And here's my testing setup. You can see I got my new and improved light bulb current limiter there, and that's plugged into the chassis, which is rested up against the cabinet here so that the speaker wires can reach their connections. And as you can see, there was a pretty vast improvement already just with the new coupling caps. <laughs> So that was good, but the big filter capacitor can still needed to be replaced regardless of whether the amp sounded pretty good. So I got all the leads desoldered from the first one, and then I clipped all the little grounding tabs off and I managed to yank it out of the chassis. Luckily, I did manage to find replacement filter cap cans online that were good enough replacements for the ones that came on it. For the first can, actually, I found one with values that were exactly the same. The second one was just kind of close enough, but pretty similar size, and the base measurements were all exactly the same, so they were able to just drop right in and place the old ones, which was really nice. So I stuck the first can in and then got all the leads back in place and soldered them up. And this is a much easier process than getting all the leads unsoldered, so that was kind of nice. And then after that, it was basically the same process for the second one. Just got all the leads unsoldered, managed to wiggle it out of its socket, and then put the new one in. And once I had all the leads soldered back up on the second one, this is what it looked like with 
both filter caps replaced. Pretty much looked the same because they were direct replacements. But the one thing I hadn't done at this point was I hadn't soldered the ground tabs on yet, but I did do that before I tested everything. And then the one final step was to replace the little electrolytic capacitor on the speaker setup here. So I just did that, and then it was time to test. So that sounded pretty good, obviously, or at least I think so. So after running it for a while and taking some voltages just to make sure everything was working properly, decided it was time to bolt it back into the cabinet. And here it is all mounted up. I also think the fuse holder looks pretty good. It doesn't really look like it was an extra modification. And as you can see, I also am running some new 66s and a new rectifier just to be safe. And I also decided at this point to take the radio receiver unit out just to look at it. And it's pretty much the same situation as the amp when I started, so maybe I'll do a part two on that or something. But as of now, that's a project for later, so it was time to put that back where it came from. And the very last step, at least for the scope of this video, was to solder back up the pilot light wiring that I had cut just to get the amp out of the cabinet originally and also to replace the three little pilot lights that go in the cabinet. And as you can see here, the pilot light wiring is completely separate from the radio chassis, so I don't have to worry about powering up the broken radio just so I can run the amp. And down here you can see the little pilot light that goes at the bottom, and then there are also two more that go on the radio screen and light that up. And before I leave you with the outro clip of this thing playing some music all put together and lit up, I should mention that I did try playing some guitar through this with the guitar plugged into the phono input, and it actually sounded pretty good. Anyway, here's what it looks like all put together and lit up and finished. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for a potential part two maybe.